Okay, 530. 5.30 having arrived, I'll call the meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Our first order of business is the continued uh, budget review, and we are going to be reviewing the insurance proposals that we've received. I'm glad you've got extra copies because I left mine in the car. <laughs> I think I have five here. Great. This is the health insurance. Yeah, I don't believe anything has changed, has it, John? Uh, You'll have to look at the second column. That would be the renewal rate. It has gone up. Uh, I meant uh, with regard to what we had earlier on this sheet. No. The numbers are still no, the same. No, that is the same. So did we have a recommendation from our broker as to what we, we did. might do I've, to hold steady? Yes. Um, I've been in discussion with uh, Bill Bald from Melturn Prescott and his recommendation is to continue with the same plan we had last year the Tufts Health Freedom Plan which uh, the first column is our current coverage second column would be our renewal amount and I also talked to him about possibly bundling the dental insurance to see if we could get a better deal to looking, looking at the numbers today and discussing it through email with him back and forth, we both concur uh, probably to stick with the plan we have now. Rather, We're not saving um, a significant amount, and the plan would change uh, enough to, uh, for, the, for the staff that it really wasn't worth it. So I have the dental plan agreement for the 2020 renewal in the signature folder as well. Um, and I have some suggested changes to the uh, insurance budget with a new uh, bottom line for you to vote into tonight. Okay. Um, just uh, without getting into any particular detail or names, have the, the, do you feel the employees have been well served? Have you been putting out fires or dealing yes. with service issues with regard to No, nope, I haven't heard uh, um, many complaints with the current coverage. We do have one staff person who uh, tends to utilize the coverage more than um, others. Um, their, their coverage is adequate, but they would obviously like something different. So what is it, the second column? Second column from the left, yes. Would be the renewal <clears throat> policy for the same coverage we have now. Is it the same or it actually looks like the, is the prescription, they contribute a little bit more to the prescription in this plan? Looks like the prescription cost uh, on the recommended plan has gone up a little. Yes. Yeah. And you'll see the total out of pocket maximum has gone up a thousand and the total out of pocket maximum family has gone up two thousand. That'd be lines eight and nine. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've got the, the health trust is the municipal association's offerings on those fourth and fifth columns. So do we need a motion on? Um, yeah, we would need a motion to uh, Decide which plan we're going to. And then we'll go on to the yeah. tool. So is it this EPO 300? 3,000. Make a motion. We go with how Tufts Health Freedom Plan EPO 3,000. Is there a second for that? Second. Further discussion? Uh, the only thing I would note is the provider at the end of the sheet. Uh, we have given a given a go in the past and had uh, a lot of service issues, um, hey. tremendous amount of service issues actually. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, there's no further discussion. Uh, those in favor of adopting the Tufts Health Freedom Plan, Granted Advantage EPO 3000, uh, basically the same plan as we had in prior years with a little bit higher out of pocket and a little bit higher prescription copay. Aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> appears to be unanimous. Okay. Uh, if for those of you who do have your budgets with you, I have some changes. If you don't, I can read the, the uh, budget line changes off and you want to write them down. Um, under the health care line, uh, our current uh, budget is 168,000. The recommendation is to go to 200,000. That will cover the increase in the premium and also uh, the increase in the, f uh, the amount of reimbursement should the plan be used. Yep. Right now, the town has a policy where uh, staff members required for the first 500 of the deductible, and the town covers the rest of the premium for the deductible. We've made out pretty well with that over the years. Right. But it's been very under budgeted, and I looked at a five year history, and there have been some years where we've uh, run way over that. So I'm recommending we increase that a little bit. It's probably not a bad idea because if we have employees or there are spouses that have uh, life events, uh, we might right. pick up more people than we're actually budgeting for, too. Correct. And I have to withhold some dollars in case. Um, any staff members have a change in family structure. We have uh, several young uh, single people who, by getting married or having children, it, it changes our plan. Um, second line uh, that is a recommended change would be under short-term disability, uh, up $400 to $7,500. And these are based on quotes from our insurance carrier, Dearborn. Um, Long-term disability is up $1,000 to $6,400. Life insurance is up $100 to $2,825. Combination life and um, accidental death and dismemberment is down $600 to $3,000 even. And the last change in the budget, um, the deductibles at the bottom, I'm recommending we go to $20,000, which is an increase of $15,000 to cover um, any usage of the insurance policy. So the new bottom line for the insurance would be $429,815. That's an increase of $47,900 over last year, or the current year, excuse me. Could you say that again? Sure. $429,815. I would have had a new budget sheet printed for you, but I didn't hear about the dental insurance until just before we met. So I will have a new page for you when we finish up with the last budget, which is um, assessing. Okay, so the actual premium increase is 20000 and change, and then we've got the, uh, just making sure that we've got the offset for Correct. potential usage on top of that. Yeah, we we've been, on use. right, but we've been very lucky in not having to go over that amount, but it's been underfunded for the last two years. I'll make a motion to approve the insurance budget of $429,815. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, appears to be unanimous. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda, we have tax rate setting. And we've got boilerplate numbers that John had prepared. Um, you can play around with retention a little bit if you want. We are. Let's see, 2018, we were 2307. The boilerplate, we're looking at 2345. Um, do you have the program set so you can give us a number, John, if we? That's what I'm hoping to load up right now. If you look on that back page, uh, current amount of retention that we used was 10.35. Um, 
Typically, DRA likes to see it in the 8 to 10 percent range. Actually, I think they'd like to see it in the 12 percent range if they were here uh, in person, but um, it's one of the things that had gone through my head was what it would look like at a flat 10 <coughs> as opposed to 10, 3, 5, but. We were 2307 last year. The year prior, we'd been 2330. Apologize, it doesn't seem to be letting me in. I can't get in. Was operational later than this afternoon, but. Okay. So if we peel that. Back even two hundred thousand. What would that? Do we have a way of figuring that without your computer? <laughs> I I am not uh, able to calculate that in my head, looking at the numbers. But that's why I wanted to use the program. Right now, you're showing to to ten point three five at a million five fifty four. Yep. So we could easily pull that back a little bit. Uh, the fund balance line you're talking about? Yeah. Um, Amount retained. What were you looking to? Take 200. Uh, take 200 off that. Off the million 554. Wouldn't be quite the 80 percent, but it'd be closer to. Which would keep us. Should keep us about where we are, or maybe a, would be a nice little bit less. Inside. It would be between eight and ten percent. Right, I got that figure, but I'm just saying, would that? Can we prove or get us down to the twenty-three oh seven for a zero increase? Or? Without that program, it's very difficult to okay. figure that out. I mean, I think we, as a board, we can. We've got a rough idea of what we're going to have for uh, retention in the fund balance here. Doing that, so if the board wants to. You know, make a motion that we hold the line even at what we were prior, or um, if we want to use a flat 9%, knowing that we'd be very close to where we were. Well, 10% is 1,501,000. Ten percent is a million three fifteen or three fifty one. Millions. What is it, Jeff? One. I was trying to do it in my head. Three fifty one. I had one three fifty four. So that would get us two hundred off that. I'll make a motion. We go with a flat nine percent. Try to retain as close as we can the twenty three zero seven rate we were this year. Is there a second for that? I'm still calculating. <laughs> what rate are you trying to? Basically trying to hold the line. Yeah. At and the or holding the line is 2307. Right now it's at 2345. That's with the 10.35. So we just pulled off 200,000. I don't know. It would be 222,680 bucks. Yeah, so just about what Dick had proposed. So it would be dropping. Yeah, it would be dropping to like uh, what? I still think re retaining 1.3 million is going to be 20. 
That's nine percent. It's nine percent. Nine percent of fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Was the board looking to change the overlay at any? Of 249? Right. Probably not. I, okay. I, I don't know what the rest of the board feels, but I'd be more comfortable uh, using a little bit of uh, retained fund balance leaving the overlay. Yeah, I would agree. So you'd like to drop that to 9% even? That sticks motion, but we don't have a second yet. It's currently to 10. It's, cur it it's currently. It's currently at 10.35. I'll second. Okay, we've got a second from Cindy on the 9%. Further discussion on whether we wanted to use 9% for retained fund balance, uh, making as close an effort as we can to stay at $23.07 for a tax rate. Which according to Jeff is around 1,351,000. Still in there. Right. Should be plenty. I think the only, you know, the only concern that I would have with regard to um, retained fund balance is utility valuation, and I think we're going to be good until next tax cycle. I, I mean, I'm hoping we're going to be good permanently, but I, I don't yeah. see any need coming up in the next six to 12 months to have money on hand for that. So if there's no further discussion. Those in favor of using 9% as our retained fund balance in an effort to try to keep our tax rate level at 2307 or as close as 9% brings us to that? Say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Hearing none. I will um, hopefully be able to get into the website tomorrow and I can send the board the final rate through an email. That would be great. And if Thank for you. some reason it, it doesn't uh, calculate out the way we estimated we could hold a special meeting, but I, I think we're going to be just about exactly where we want to be. Yeah, for some reason the website's not allowing me in, so I'll give you that answer as soon as I have it. Thank you. Okay, in view of outstanding minutes, we have minutes of November 4th. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. I would note that I was only here for the last 32 seconds of that meeting. So. <laughs> Those in favor of accepting the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on. We have an accounts payable manifest in the amount of $33,528.77. So moved. I have a second for that? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 We have the dental coverage and rates, and these we had discussed these uh, previously, but decided to hold off voting on them until John had talked to Bill Bald. And from your uh, report of a few minutes ago, I'm assuming that Bill does not feel he can do any better. Correct. He concurs with staying with our current plan as it's listed the there. Trust. Yep. Okay, so we have a contract. Um, and I'll just read the rates under the dental coverage and rates. A single person is $43.89 a month. Two person is $84.96. And the family plan premium is $154.57. Um, <coughs> one signature line here. Need a motion to approve the health trust for dental. I do. So moved. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> the figures you just read off. Yep. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'll sign it.
Okay, we have a Town of Deerfield Highway Winter Contractor Agreement, and this is uh, with Steve Rollins. And uh, Steve's route would be Meeting House, Hill Road, uh, Gulf Road, Pleasant Hill, Mountain Road, and Paradise. Um, he's, has the appropriate insurance in place, it appears, and he has sign the contract and I'm assuming that we have it in the folder because the road agent uh, has recommended that's correct that we move forward with it make a motion to sign the agreement with Steve Rollins is there a second second discussion hearing none those in favor aye, aye. aye. I would note that this is for a uh, small truck too. It's an F-350. Okay, we have um, an abatement request, uh, notice of computer adjustment, and this is for the University of New Hampshire property on Saddleback Mountain Road. Uh, reason for the abatement, UNH land was removed from being exempt, but the exemption was not added. Avatar recommends this abatement. The taxes have not been paid. This is for the principal only. How much is it, Andy? It is $2,659. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of uh, granting the adjustment? Aye. Aye. And we have a utility pole or underground conduit petition. Uh, this is for New Hampshire Electric Co ops lines. Uh, see if I can find an address. Uh, the map in the back. All right. I was just trying to get a name and give everything but. Uh, this is a Candia Road property. So no. Name of the applicant or address. Uh, we have the poll number, uh, which is 3727, and it's on Candia Road. I don't know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it appears to have been approved by the necessary folks in town and by the electric co-op. Um, I guess uh, we need a motion to grant permission to... them to set a poll it is it's you know they're they're fine with it but as I said there's no name on it it just gives the name of the poll oh consolidated communications I'm sorry so moved second further discussion hearing none those in favor aye, aye. okay it needs to be signed in multiple places I was looking for an individual name and in that. They don't provide that. <laughs> Takes care of the signatures. Correspondence file is somewhat thin. We have a report from Executive Counselor for District 4, Theodore Gatsis, uh, for your reading pleasure. If you're wondering what's going on with the Executive Council.
print your name. Should some light music or something that plays while people in between <laughs> signatures. You can sell ads like do posters. Okay, moving on to the town administrator's report. Two items. One is a uh, follow-up from the last meeting. The Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission Solid Waste Grant Program. Uh, Sylvia Van Olick, the uh, director, had a long discussion with Rick Pelletier and he was able to give her all the information she needs Good. in order to fill out the uh, grant application. Um, and also I received a request from a family member of the Ambrose property. This is one of the properties along Gulf Road uh, that was recently deeded. Uh, the property is indicating, uh, the family is indicating that they would like to purchase the property back. Um, we haven't even received the deed yet uh, from Rockingham County, so I suggested to the family nothing's going to happen with the property immediately and that uh, the board could decide what they want to do once we get the deed. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Quick question. Do we know how long the police cruiser is going to be out of commission? I do not. I just heard back from Primex today. They've connected with the chief. The uh, a, a, a adjuster is coming out tomorrow to take a look at the cruiser. So it's moving rapidly. Good. If I have an update, I'll give it to the board. What happened? Yeah. Uh, to Josh? Todd. Todd. Uh, ran into Todd. a deer at the bottom of Meeting House Hill a few nights ago. Ooh. And uh, it was a pretty solid deer, although it there was wasn't some, that big, but it was must have been muscular because some it did a lot of damage. <laughs> damage to the front uh, push bar, the hood, and the bumper. Which cruiser? The newer one. Of course. The floor. Yeah. But it bent the push bar. Wow. Bent wow. it like right into the front of the car. <laughs> was the officer okay? Everybody was fine, Good. except well, the deer. Except the deer. Yeah. <laughs> Who's apparently in Todd's freezer. <laughs> Amber. <laughs> um, other questions for John? Uh, okay, moving on to unfinished business. And I don't think we've got much in the way of draft warrant at this time. Um, one of the things that we had discussed and I think would be uh, good to move ahead with is that road reconstruction um, warrant article. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. And I, I know you had I have some other things. Right. Based on about. discussions over the, uh, the course of the year by the board, I have a number of warrants in uh, draft form, sample language for you to consider whether you want to add it into next year's warrant or not. So I can present those along with the full draft warrant next yeah. meeting. And we've got a little bit of time still. Yes, this is early, but I just wanted to get it out there so you folks had time to talk about it. New business? Yeah, Highway agent is here, I think, to discuss the uh, furnace. That's correct, okay. along with our uh, facility supervisor. We're going to get some heat in the building. Yes. Tonight would be a good night to have heat in the building. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let's, um, you've got information, John, let's discuss it. We, we ha I have an update. Uh, we were able to get a, another option for the highway uh, garage that you folks hadn't discussed yet. Um, we have a final uh, quoted price for the uh, standing oil burner that you originally approved with the additional flue work that's needed. Uh, that in quote total is $11,083 now. Um, but in trying to get other options, we also considered putting in a furnace style that was originally part of the highway uh, building, which is a ceiling unit, still oil fired. And we have a new quote of $8,000 even for that unit. 
I was <clears throat> I was told that that by putting it up in the attic, we don't have the expense of a new chimney. That's well, the flue work would not be needed because it connects right into the chimney, as I understand. I'm getting two nods, so I think that's uh, and correct. And it is oil. I can't see the road agent, so. yeah, they're both <laughs> nodding. They're both nodding. It is oil fired. It is oil fired. I know that's what he requested two meetings ago. Yep. We also uh, had the option of an outdoor wood boiler, which is by far and away the cheapest. I think that came in at about three, three thousand yep. dollars. But we also had quotes on a pellet stove, uh, hung. Uh, burners like the highway garage I mean the uh, fire station has that would be um, so there's multiple options but this is still oil fired and it would go in the ceiling and remove the cost of the additional flue work where does it stand now as far as we already had okayed a vendor and a price this is still Al Terry and in order to be fair to the vendor we've stuck with the same vendor since we do have we originally had a signed agreement and we've changed it once uh, I, they've, they're still willing to work with us. Uh, they're the ones that gave us the quote for the in the ceiling unit. Um, I think to be fair to the vendor who has stuck with us and come back out here multiple times to give us options. Um, right. that, what do we need for, what type of motion do we need to? I have a new agreement for the ceiling unit if that's the way the board is looking as compared to. Yeah, if the board wants to move ahead with the ceiling unit, uh, we are looking at, and I'll read the basic rundown here, installation of a new high boy style oil furnace in ceiling job includes removal and disposal of old oil furnace, installation of new Granby high, high boy style oil furnace, uh, 66,000 with a three ton blower. Um, it includes the materials required to hang furnace. It uh, includes uh, thermostats, plugging it into the exhaust and existing flue pipe in the roof. One year parts and labor warranty and it is a flat $8,000 amount. What's the BTU, BTU output on the, uh, the ceiling unit? I believe is the 66,000. And that matches? Uh, that uh, matches the other one, uh, both the 66,000 and the three-ton blower. Okay. They're the same on both units. What's the, what do you mean by ceiling mounted? Is it in the attic Ray? or is it in the? Or mark. It's, it's mounted between the suspended ceiling and the roof. That was the, there's still the brackets from the original unit that was up there. Oh, similar to this. Was there that died. Can you give us a rundown, Ray? Oh, yeah, the, originally there was a ceiling um, furnace up there. The old brackets are still hanging up there. Um, I wasn't aware of that until after we looked up stairs to find out what the options would be for the flu. Um, so I asked them, is there any way possible that we could hang it up there? And they wanted to know what the clearance was, and there's 42 inches of clearance. Um, so he said there's more than enough to put it up there. If you want, we can make that an option. So it'll give them a lot more floor space for them to use in their building uh, because that big furnace in there is taking up half that room anyway. So we figured we'd put it up there. And as long as it's safe, they check with Rick. He said it passes all the codes. So I said, all right, write me up an option and we'll put it in there. So it'll be suspended above the suspended ceiling and then the panels will be back in. You won't even know it's up there. Hmm. We currently have one in the fire station. That's so maintaining, the it, maintaining it's not a big deal. You don't think to get up in the ceiling and... Nope. Step ladder. <clears throat> it has a tiger loop on it, so it'll keep its prime. Okay. So yeah. it should be... I mean, all the state sheds that I worked at before have them. They're all hang-in furnaces in there because of the plows and the wings and the trucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't run into them. They hang them. What was the number again for that? Uh, 8,000 flat. But we, so do we start from scratch where we had 5,900 before, or are we looking to do the difference? My recommendation would be to withdraw your motion originally from the uh, agreement you signed a week or two ago. Yeah, that was 10, 16, 19. So if, if you want to withdraw the motion and second uh, from October I think 16th. I made the motion. I think you did, too. Yeah, so I'll be more than happy to withdraw the t motion from 10, 16. Okay. We will uh, withdraw the $11,083 contract then and take up the $8,000 uh, hanging furnace style, uh, ceiling style furnace. And, and Mark, you're, this is, will work for you? 
So we would need a motion for the new number. And so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Okay, you're going to state in the motion that's coming out of that building. Fund. Uh, what was that called? Certainly can. Uh, the, the funding for this, this work will come out of the municipal government building fund, trust fund. Yeah. Yep. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it appears to be unanimous. Get Al there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work right. on that. Would you get on that? Thank you. Did they, did they give you a timeline on it? Uh, they said within two weeks, but I haven't got a signed document back to them to get that. the, That's good. the yeah. approval. You'll have one in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to pay with MasterCard, Visa, or Discover? <laughs> Those are our options. Thank you. Okay, other new business. Um, I would mention that I've had uh, a couple of conversations with Wes Gollum, who used to chair the Town Energy Committee. And um, one of the things that uh, Wes is interested, he's been talking to me about, and I think he's probably going to want to come to the board at some point. He's been following closely the solar installation that the town of Derry uh, did uh, at their transfer station site, mm -hmm. um, which I was not aware that you could put solar installations um, on transfer station sites, but I believe theirs is about the same age as, as ours with the same test pits, that sort of thing on it. Uh, they were able to do that, and um, apparently you know, with tax credits and some grant, uh, that sort of thing, we're able to pay for it pretty handily. And uh, they've obviously got a lot more electric usage than we do, but uh, this, the potential savings that uh, they're on track to see are in the hundreds of thousands um, uh, when it all pans out. So um, I'm going to uh, meet with Wes, and he's going to give me a little bit of a pitch, and I think he's likely to ask to come to the board and talk about <coughs> it uh, as well. But I had... Uh talked to Rick about this at one point because it looked at the how much uh, uh, area that we had at the closed landfill and being able to put it put the uh, solar panels there and then Rick had said well gee we've got uh, this would tie into the co-op and we don't really expend that much money from the co-op but isn't the school on the co-op I actually I'm not sure they are because PSNH. Uh, I, I think they may be. They are on co-op. Okay. So conceivably, uh, whether it goes to the town as such or to the school, mm. the town itself is saving money. If so, we get it back. Yeah. So I, I think uh, you know, seat of the pants calculation. If you've got five acres of open space, uh, you know, with a good tree line back and away uh, five acres equates to about a megawatt mm. um, I think in New Hampshire uh, you know for a site like that so wow. mm. but I just brought it up for yeah so it won't be a surprise if, good um, other new business or other business hearing none I believe we have no particular reason to go into a non-public session so we'll skip that at this point we take citizens comments Seeing no citizens stepping to the microphone, I would Make entertain a motion. motion. Adjourn. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Next meeting, Monday 19th. Correct. And there is a budget committee meeting the 19th, 19th so night after that. They're going to